Well, good morning, everyone, and it's great to be here on Mother's Day and to be sharing God's Word with you. And as you know, we're exploring the Book of Romans, and one of the great things is is that God speaks through His Word, and I know that God is speaking to you through His Word. And so, during this uh, season of messages through the Book of Romans, I trust that. Uh, you will be reading or listening to the book of Romans, maybe now reading and listening to Romans chapters 4 through to 6. You might want to use the study notes that are on our church Facebook page. And you might want to grab yourself a notebook because you need to dig into this book. Uh, sometimes this is not an easy book in order to follow your way through and to follow the argument. And sometimes you need to dig in and as a result it's good to... Uh, write down your thoughts, your learnings and insights because sometimes uh, Romans can, uh, well, it can get real dense. And I trust that by doing that, that during the week, uh, we will be gathering the wood to build a fire and then as we come together, that the Spirit will ignite a fire within your heart that burns brightly. So let's pray together. Dear God, we do thank you for your word. And we pray now that as we look at Romans chapter 3, that you would bring enlightenment to our minds, that you would grant understanding to our spirit, and that you would help us to hear what you have to say to us. Uh, Lord, we pray this morning that as we read your word, that your spirit would take those words and apply them into our lives. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us now as we unpack your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you've ever received bad news, but then it's immediately followed by good news. You have the bad news, and then all of a sudden they say, oh, but the good news is, uh, like you might decide, well, we're not going to go on a, a family holiday uh, this year, but then you come home and find that your wife has booked a cruise. Now, bad news by good news. Yeah. So, wives? Oh, no, it's Mother's Day. Okay. Or you might find out bad news and it's immediately by good news. Well, the first part of the book of Romans is Paul giving us bad news. He's told us that the wrath and the anger of God is revealed to all those who reject the Lordship of Jesus. This is the bad news. And it doesn't matter what person you are, or whether you're Jewish or non-Jewish, or whether you're uh, religious or irreligious, if you reject the Lordship of God, you'll be judged. And the summary statement of this is Romans chapter 3, verse 10. There is no one righteous, not even one. The bad news. But now the good news, but now the good news from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 24. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So the good news, and the good news begins here in verse 21 with, but now, but now, now, those two little words are powerful and wonderful in the Bible, but now. Usually it's spelling out the fact that there's bad news, but it's going to be immediately followed by good news. Here's the bad news. There is no one righteous, not even one. But now, but now, God has done something new and special through Jesus. But now, God has offered us a solution to our sin problem. But now, there is good news that is more powerful than the bad news. But now, Jesus has done something that the law couldn't do. But now, there is hope for humanity. And so Jesus accomplishes what the law could not. And Paul says, well, this is not a new concept. This is something that has been pointed at throughout the Bible. He says that the law and the prophets testify that the Old Testament portion of our Bible is pointing to Jesus. 
And it's saying that we need Jesus. We need a rescuer. We need a deliverer. We need someone who can bring us back to God. And so Jesus came and did what we really needed. And what we really needed was the righteousness of God. In our sin, we received the wrath and anger of God. But now through faith in Jesus, we receive the righteousness of God. Righteousness. Now, righteousness is not about who you know. It's not about who you are. It's about whose you are. And there's a little picture that can help us to understand this, that uh, Jesus, his thoughts and words and deeds add up to righteousness. Perfect. On the other hand, our thoughts and words and deeds add up to sin. But our sin is taken over by Jesus. It's added to his account. But not only that, Jesus then gives us his righteousness that covers our sin. So it's not about who you are, it's about whose you are. You matter to God. And God wants you in the family picture album. He wants to see you in his family. And the good news is in Romans 3.22, the good news is to all who believe. All who believe and have faith in Jesus. All who believe and have faith in Jesus receive the righteousness of God. Now, if you look up that Greek word for all, it actually means everyone. All. Nobody's excluded. It's all. In Jesus. All who believe and have faith in Jesus are destined to experience the righteousness of God. And then Paul goes on to give a summary. <coughs> he mentions in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The result is that we don't measure up. We fall short. There's a problem. It's a sin problem and it's bad news. But immediately it's followed by good news in verse 24. And the good news is all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. The bad news immediately followed by the good news. And in the good news, in Jesus, we receive the righteousness of God. So how does this good news work out in our lives? How does this good news work in our lives? Well, Romans chapter 3, verses 25 to 26 says this. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. I don't know if you like really sweet, sickly desserts. One time we had a toad own cheesecake and oh my gosh with an Oreo cookie base oh my gosh it was so rich and dense I had to get a little spoon and eat it and I could only eat just a tiny bit at a time and eventually I got all the way through it it was so rich and dense that when I was asked do I want a second piece I just had to say oh no not just at the moment I've just got to let that really settle and you might have a cup of tea or, a, or a, a, some ice cream and you might get a brain freeze or something like that. Well, I got a sugar spike and I was <laughs> all over the place. And I just had to wait until it, a good five minutes before I had my next piece. <laughs> and I feel that this part of the book of Romans is like a Toblerone cheesecake with an Oreo base. It's rich and it's dense. And I want to give everybody a little spoon and say, try some. Try some. Take it, eat it, 
reflect on it, let it ring good, no, let it uh, re <laughs> reflect on it, and hear what God has to say to us, because this is this. All the big Christian words are here. And notice here that it says this. God did this. This is God's work. God sent Jesus. God the Father sent Jesus. God the Father presented Jesus as a sacrifice. God did this. This is not something that we can do on our own. The good news, it starts with this understanding. We can't do it. God is the only one who can do this. Now there's an important word mentioned here in this section of Romans, and it's the word atonement. And it's a word that uh, is often used in the Old Testament, and it refers to the Ark of the Covenant, refers to the sacrifices that the people of Israel used to do. And uh, this is a uh, picture of the Ark of the Covenant. All those who have watched Indiana Jones will recognise it immediately. Uh, except we're not going to the demons and the flesh melting. That's, that's part of that's the story. This is uh, the Ark of the Covenant right here. The Ark of the Covenant was really important. It was in the most holy place in the temple. And God's presence rested above the Ark of the Covenant. And when the priest would come in and make a sacrifice, he would get the blood and he would take that blood and he would sprinkle it on the top of the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. He would sprinkle that blood as an atoning sacrifice. That is, there was a blood sacrifice that removed the sin of the people. And now Jesus is that atoning blood sacrifice. Jesus is that new and better sacrifice to bring us into a loving relationship with God. And the work of Jesus as an atoning sacrifice wipes away our sins so that we can know God and receive the righteousness of God. And this atoning sacrifice, Jesus as his atoning sacrifice, was the plan of God before the beginning of time. That sin would come into the world and we would receive the wrath of God, but that Jesus would come into the world and we would receive the righteousness of God. And so God's righteousness means that God is fair, is good, is right, is holy. He doesn't overlook sin. He doesn't excuse sin. He doesn't say, oh, well, look, that sin really wasn't that bad, I guess. All who have sinned have fallen short of God's glory. And the reason that God is righteous is that he sends Jesus into our world and it's through the death of Jesus that the penalty for our sin is paid. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice. God doesn't excuse sin. Jesus paid for our sins. And because Jesus paid for our sins, we are justified. And justified means that we are declared righteous. God didn't let our sins slide. He didn't sweep it under, under the carpet without it being punished. It's Jesus who paid the penalty. And so now... When God the Father looks at us this morning to determine the guilt of our sin, he sees the work of Jesus and he says to you, not guilty, free, forgiven, blameless, righteous, without fault. That's good news. Let's go on that. Yeah. That's good news. As 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 makes clear to us, God made him, Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So God the Father sends Jesus that we receive the righteousness of God. Now, what do we do with this good news? What do we do 
with this good news. Well, Romans chapter 3, verses 27 to 31, gives us some ideas. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. Because of what law? The law that requires works? No. Because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through the same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. So what's Romans chapter 3, verses 27 to 31 saying to us about what we do with the good news? Well, first of all, it's saying this. We can't take any credit for this. It's all a work of God. There's no room for bragging or boasting because this good news is totally God. It's based upon the work of Jesus. Being made right with God is totally God's work. We can't take any credit for this. We can't take any credit for the good news. But secondly, our faith, our salvation is all about our faith in Jesus. It's all about our faith in Jesus, not about our works, not about what we can do, not about what we can become. It's all about our faith in Jesus. And this part of Romans is saying that all people are made right with God by faith in Jesus alone. And so just as the Bible and just as the church has declared uh, down through the ages, it's salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, according to the Bible alone, for the glory of God alone. Our salvation is about faith in Jesus. But thirdly, this good news is the hope for our world. If you know Jesus, you have the solution for our world that has lost its way. Share the good news. Jesus is here. And then fourthly, seek Jesus. Because by golly, you need him desperately. I need him desperately. Come to Jesus. Remain in Jesus. Don't stop chasing after him. Pursue him. Find time to seek him daily, weekly. Remember, in your faith in Jesus, remember whose you are. There's a story of the baby lion who became lost and uh, wandered into a family of little lambs. And this little lion started to act like a sheep. It started to eat the grass and to baa and run away when there was ever danger. And one day while this little lion was munching grass with all the little lambs, there was a loud roar. Well, all the little lambs scattered, but the little lion stayed put. And when the lion behind the roar arrived, he looked at the little lion and said, what on earth are you doing here? And the little lion said, I'm munching grass. And the big lion, big lion said, what's that pathetic noise you're making? And he said, it's called a bar. And the big lion took the little lion over to a quiet pool of water and said, look at our faces. And the little lion gazed into the water and said, wow, I'm just like you. And the big lion said, yes. Now you know who you are and whose you are. Live like a lion. Church, remember who you are. And whose you are, you are the righteousness of God. Live like a lion. Live the righteousness of God. And so we're going to come now to our time of communion this morning, and our communion table is just behind us. And we're going to take the uh, piece of bread, and we're going to take the cup, and we're going to remember the sacrifice of Jesus, of what he has <coughs> done for us, that he has taken our sin, and he has given us his righteousness, so that we can stand before the Father. So let us pray together.
Our Father in heaven, we are just so thankful for the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus into our world. Thank you for all that you have done for us that we can't claim any of this. Thank you for drawing us into a relationship with Jesus. Lord, we thank you that in Jesus we have the only hope for humanity. So empower us to share that good news with others. But Lord Jesus, we need you desperately in our lives. So we pray now that as we take this bread and drink from this cup and remember your death until you come again, that we would experience your presence, your grace and your love. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. So as we listen to this song up on the screen, I would invite you, when you are ready, to just stand up from where you are and to go to the communion tables.